It's a new year, with new stories waiting to be told. In the last episode, we watched Aunt Bonnie, my queen carpenter aunt, preparing for winter. We also welcomed the arrival of a new colony of Campanota CA-02 to replace the minions of Midas, who are currently going through diapause for the winter in a wine fridge. But what I didn't tell you is that they were not the only colony that I ordered. So today, I would like to introduce you to not one, but two new colonies of species I have never kept. Yet both colonies have won me over with their quirky personalities, and neither of them require hibernation. That means we'll be able to get to know these colonies over the next couple months until I wake up my carpenter ants in the spring. Welcome back to the story of the ants. The first colony is a member of the species Pogonomyrmex rugosus, also known as the rough harvester ant. Harvesters are unique because unlike most ants, they are granivorous, meaning they almost exclusively eat seeds and other grains. These remarkable farmers play an important role in the dispersal of plant seeds and contribute to soil health. Harvester ants also have a painful sting, similar to that of a bee, which is impressive for their small size, and are polymorphic, having both standard size workers and majors. The second colony belongs to Novomesser coccarelli, also known as the desert long-legged ant. And unlike harvesters, these swift little hunters are full-blown carnivores and are known to have a highly aggressive feeding response. Their extended spider-like legs give them a longer stride to move quickly and keep their bodies further away from the scorching desert sands. Looking at these two colonies side by side, they could not be more different. The long legs seem like a cross between a spider and a mantis, and the harvesters have a short, stumpy build like a bulldog. In Star Wars terms, the long legs remind me of while the harvesters are more like their initial responses to being uncovered were different too. The harvesters didn't seem to care at all and went about their business. The long legs, on the other hand, simultaneously froze in place, except for this rookie that didn't get the memo. I also couldn't help but notice the condition of their tubes. The long legs was impressively clean, while the harvesters <laughs> looked like a complete pigsty. It was now feeding time. These blue feeding trays I got from Eukarya where I bought the colonies usually make feeding really easy, but on that first day, everyone was full of energy. Crowding the entrance, running around, moving seeds, friggin' trying to attack the plastic insert. One of them even escaped for a moment before squeezing her way back in. They wouldn't even let me open the tray enough to give them a fruit fly. Now, even though the adults live entirely on seeds, they still need insect protein for the larva to grow. I watched as they pulled the little fruit fly into the nest, celebrated for a moment, before one of them grabbed it and darted further in. Whoa! What was that? I didn't even notice that till I was reviewing the footage. The long legs got their fruit fly and immediately started working together to rip it apart. Sick. Now, I want to point something out here. Notice how much bigger this worker is than these. That's because these workers were most likely part of the queen's first batch of workers, which are called ninitics. During the founding stage, a queen feeds her first larva with nutrients from her own body, resulting in underfed, smaller workers. Later generations of larvae have their older sisters, bringing them plenty of food from outside the nest, allowing them to reach their full size. You can also see the color difference here between this pale worker that has just eclosed, these slightly darker workers that have been around a week or two, and these fully darkened OGs showing them the ropes. Both of these colonies have so much personality that they really deserve their own video, and they definitely need to be named. Looking at the harvester ants, one name came to mind that I think just fits. I'm gonna call them the bulldozers, both for the agricultural reference, but they also seem strong and industrious, like little dwarves that can move a lot of dirt. I could use some help thinking of a name for the queen though, so leave your ideas and vote for your favorites in the comments. And then we have our desert long-legged ants. Because they have learned the ways of the desert and dwell beneath its scorched sands, they shall be known as the Raiders of Arrakis, led by the fearsome Duchess of Dune. Yeah, 
I already have stories from these two colonies that I'm eager to share. The bulldozers in particular have been hilarious, but that's a tale for next time, as the story of the ants marches on.